Welcome back to In The Blues, my name's Shane. In today's video, I've got a brand new episode of Keys To The Guitar Shop. If you're unfamiliar with this series, Sky Music, my local music shop, allow us to come in, set up as a band, and test and play any amplifier, guitar, bass, or drum equipment in the shop. It's pretty wild, so a massive thank you to them for letting us do this. Sky Music let me borrow a lot of the products that I showcase on the channel, and that means this video is not sponsored. I actually have to pay a few bucks to do this, so if you can, please leave a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'll link to all the gear in this video down in the description so you can check it out in your part of the world. Before we go any further, a huge thank you to the rhythm section, Dave on drums and Dave number two on bass guitar. Thank you guys. You guys absolutely killed it. And a big thanks to Dom showcased on guitar. He's a right-handed guitar player, so he gets to test out some different guitars that I'll be unable to play. Otherwise, being a lefty, Dom's one of my favorite players in Melbourne. We've gigged together, we've jammed together for years. It's just got a unique and interesting style and I hope you like it. Massive thanks also to Rhiannon for helping switch this episode. I really appreciate it. It really takes the load off having to edit all of this in post. So it's a massive time saver. Thank you so much. One of the things we like to do with the Keys to the Guitar Shop series is also taking some of our own gear to showcase how that sounds in the context of a mix or with different amplifiers and so forth. So you're in for a treat. Going into this first set, Dom was playing his PRS-305, which is loaded with three single coil pickups. It's kind of like a high output Strat in many ways when you're talking about how it sounds. It's a great sounding electric guitar. The overdrive Dom is playing throughout the entire video is an Ibanez Tube Screamer NTS. This is one of those ones with the little nano tubes or micro tubes built right into it. Dom's one of the masters when it comes to using volume pedals and he's got a Leal Volume S pedal. So keep an eye on what his foot's doing if you can see it throughout the video. I want to kick this session off with something familiar. So I'm playing my very own PRS SE Custom 24 in Trampus Green. My overdrive is the Royal Flush Dual Overdrive pedal alongside the Buffalo FX Carrera OD. My delay pedal of choice is the Crazy Tube Circuits Time Delay. In this first set, we went for smaller Fender amplifiers. I say smaller, but they're plenty loud. Dom grabbed the great sounding Fender 63 Princeton Chris Stapleton Signature Edition amplifier. This is a 15 watt amplifier loaded with a 12 inch speaker and six V6 output valves. I reviewed this on the channel a while back and it sounds fantastic. If you're thinking about getting into a Princeton, this would be my first recommendation. The 12 inch speaker paired with just its overall throw and output, it's a really special amp. I grabbed the Fender 57 Custom Deluxe amplifier, which is rated at 12 watts. It has a 12 inch speaker, no reverb, just a simple tone control you get it up to about four or five and it absolutely sings. This amplifier doesn't have any reverb or any effects. And again, you don't need it when the tone is good and it handled the pedals beautifully. Being able to get these amplifiers up to their sweet spot was a really great experience. Let's take a listen.
As you can hear from the sample clips, both of these amplifiers sound great. The little Tweed amplifier has some of the most 3D pop I've heard when it comes to a guitar amplifier of this size. It cut the mix beautifully, and overall, it's a great hand-wired amplifier. They're not cheap, but for that kind of tone, it sounds pretty wild. Don was clearly playing cleaner than I was in this particular section of the video, but that Princeton amp is really something special. If you get a chance to try one out, definitely give it a go. <laughs> enjoying these amplifiers so much that we thought we'd use them for the next set and we grabbed some Stratocasters off the wall. I've never seen Dom play a Strat. I've known him for a very long time so this was a bit of a kick for me to see him play something a little bit different like this. Dom decided to grab a Fender Rory Gallagher Stratocaster off the wall. This is a Heavy Relic Custom Shop Electric and also replicates the wear patterns of Rory's original guitar. This guitar is loaded with 60 single coil pickups and we get 21 medium jumbo frets. I grabbed a Fender Ultra Stratocaster, so the opposite end of the spectrum, something a whole lot more modern in its design and overall appearance. This has a gold anodized pickguard. We get a modern D-shaped neck with an ultra satin finish, and it's loaded with three ultra noiseless vintage Strat single coil pickups. So the exact opposite of the Rory Gallagher. I thought this might make for a practical experiment to see whether or not you can hear a difference between single coils and noiseless pickups in the context of a band mix. Here we go. While the American Ultra Stratocaster has a thinner neck than I would usually like, it still feels really good in the hand, and it played great. I did notice though, if you turn up the gain too much, you can get a little bit of feedback. You're about to hear the Rory Gallagher Strat in Dom's hands on this next track. Sometimes when we're pulling guitars off the wall, stuff can go out of tune, which is why I didn't show you any of the slow blues stuff. We stopped, we started again, and we played something a little bit different. Let's take a listen. Thank you. 
Whether you like custom shop heavy relic guitars visually or not, one thing needs to be said, and Dom commented on this as well, just how great the neck felt in the hand. Here's a quick look at the back of the neck. It's sanded into oblivion. There's no friction, no tension on it. It just feels really nice. It's time to get over to something a little bit different. So we both picked up a couple of Gibson SGs. Now Dom grabbed the Gibson SG61 standard with a sideways vibrola in vintage cherry. This SG is loaded with the 60s burst bucket pickups, which in my opinion, are the best pickups that Gibson make. The burst buckets sound beautiful. As the name suggests, if we take a look at the tailpiece, we do get that sideways vibrola, which is kind of like a tremolo arm for an SG. It's pretty cool. Dom also has now replaced the Fender amplifier with his very own Bad Cat Classic Cat amplifier. This is one of those amps, the further you turn it up, the better it sounds. The SG of choice for this lefty over here was one I'd never seen in person, but I was keen to try. This is the Gibson SG Tony Iommi. This guitar is loaded with two P90 pickups. So these are single coil pickups and they sound great in the context of a mix. P90s, man, they have an absolute cut and vibe about them that's hard to match. While we were consistently tuning guitars up before every bracket, unfortunately, some of them hold tune better than others. And Gibson, well, anyway, it might speak for itself. Let's have a listen. <laughs> I'm next we're checking out one of the new PRS guitars. This is the PRS Fiore Electric in what they call Black Iris. Now to the untrained eye, this kind of looks black until you tilt the angle under the light, kind of gets a purpley vibe in there as well. It's a really beautiful color. This is a three pickup guitar. It has two single coil pickups and a humbucker and they're very well balanced. So if you're switching between the humbucker and the other single coils, you don't notice much of a volume change. Being that this is a three pickup guitar, there's also a five way toggle switch and a couple of push pull options for different tonal options. It's a very versatile guitar and these might be some of the best clean to off clean tones throughout the entire video. Dom's still playing his Bad Cat amplifier while I'm still using the Fender Tweed amp. It's a great sounding amplifier, but I decided to grab something a little bit different to my modded PRS SE Custom 24. I grabbed a stock one off the shelf. I really wanted to get a sense of what the PRS SE Custom 24s are like in 2023. These are made in Indonesia, basically exactly the same guitar as I've got, but mine's made in Korea. I'll comment on that in just a moment.
As you can hear from this video, Dom's clean tones were really something else. That guitar really suits his style. I dig it. Now, when it came to the PRS SE Custom 24, these new made in Indonesia ones are far better than the first run a few years ago. I was really unimpressed with the first run of Indonesian made guitars after owning the Korean one. The Korean one felt like a far better instrument in the hand. The overall feel and toggle switches and everything was just a little bit better on mine than the first run of Indonesian ones. But now these ones are great. I couldn't tell them apart. If you're unfamiliar with the Super Reverb, it's my favorite Fender amplifier of all time. It's not even close. It has this really great voicey tone. It fills a room and the reverb is super. It's beautiful. It's one of the best sounding amplifiers ever. And just to be clear, this isn't a Tone Master amplifier. This is the real deal and paired with my Kiesel S5 electric guitar, some of my personal best tones of the night, in my opinion. I owned one of these amplifiers for a very long time and they're very inspiring to play. They're just not too inspiring to get from the floor into a car and then into a venue. They're heavy. Dom's back to his PRS 305 and he's using a Fender Deluxe Reverb. Now a Deluxe Reverb is rated at 22 watts and it has a single 12 inch speaker. The Super Reverb I'm using, I think is 45 watts and it's loaded with four 10 inch speakers. So I was a bit loud in this set, but man, the clean tones were beautiful. Let's take a listen.
When it comes to getting a really great clean tone, either of these two amps will definitely deliver and their reverb circuit is awesome. Furthermore, they also have a tremolo circuit built in. So if you wanna get onboard tremolo, you can get that straight out of the amplifier. I just forgot how lush the reverb is on a super reverb and how voicey that tone is. Not only does it sound great clean, but if you just push a pedal into it or get it up to the sweet spot, it sounds absolutely beautiful. Same can be said for a deluxe reverb. They're far more portable than a super reverb. They handle pedals beautifully and they're the most recorded amplifier in history. Oh, this thing's ridiculous. <laughs> wow. Does it sound cool up the front? Yeah. Like where you are? Yeah. It's probably a bit up loud. Sorry, I don't know. I'm about as low as I can get it before it mm. doesn't sound as good. Uh, wow, that's cool. We're gonna try and blues rock our way into this next little bracket here. And I've grabbed the Gretsch G5 622 Electromatic. This is in what they call Georgia Green. Now I reviewed one of these guitars quite some time ago and it shocked me just how functional and usable it is for something that's not a solid body electric guitar. The great news is we do get a block down the center and paired with the Blacktop Broadtron pickups, you get excellent tones, both clean and dirty. If you haven't played one of these guitars before, they're a lot like an Epiphone ES-335, not like the Casino, which are fully hollow and don't handle overdrive or loud volume anywhere near as well as what an Epiphone ES-335 does, except we get much chimier and more voicey pickups on this Gretsch and it's very, very usable for a range of styles. You don't just have to use it for rockabilly. You can play pretty much anything on this electric. Time grab the guitar I've never showcased on my channel before, and this is the Yamaha Revstar RSP-02T. This is in what they call crisp gold, and it looks absolutely beautiful. One of the key characteristics of this guitar is it's made in Japan. Now, there's three levels to this Revstar range. There's the Element, the Standard, and the Professional. This is part of that Professional range. We also get P90 pickups, which are single coils, and they handle drive and clean tones beautifully. Now, if you've never played P90 pickups before, they have an inherent sort of dirty quality to the top end, but they cut through the mix beautifully. And Dom really showcased that in this particular section.
fucking shreds. That's fun, man. I'm surprised how well that handled the dirt. Yeah. It's pretty good. One of the things that really stood out in this particular section were how great the tones were on both neck and bridge pickup on the Gretsch. Both are extremely functional. There's something that just cuts beautifully through the mix without ever getting too shrill, and I really dig it. When it came to the Yamaha Revstar, Dom really enjoyed playing it. I always asked him after each set, what do you think of the guitar? And he told me his feedback, and it was definitely one that he enjoyed playing. These pickups also had a really smooth quality to them, but if you want to throw more gain at them, you can, and they'll really start to take off. That bridge pickup has a lot of attitude. And that wraps up another keys to the guitar shop. Starting on the next episode, the format of the video will change even further. I'm starting to find my way through this particular series and what I think will make it work the best. So stay tuned. The next episode will be different to this one again. Although the concept will be the same, there'll be a few new additions that I haven't actually showcased up until now. So stay tuned. A massive thank you to all of the channel members and Patreon crew for your continued support. It helps fund ideas like this, so I do really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who supports the channel by liking, commenting, all of that kind of stuff. It really helps. And a massive thank you to Sky Music for letting us shoot this episode. I really appreciate it. Catch you soon. See ya.